the aims of the course today are to give an introduction to everyone on the fundamental electrical principle introduce the ideas of alternating current and direct current and finally to show the basic ideas on voltage and current In September of 1831, Michael Faraday made the discovery of electromagnetic induction. Michael is considered the father of electricity due to his discoveries and his creation of some of the equations that we use. Faraday originally attached two wires to a disc and rotated the disc between the opposing poles of a horseshoe magnet, creating an electric current. Let's look at some of the definitions we'll be using in this course. The first one is voltage, that's a measure of electrical force, i.e. how quickly the electricity moves. Next is the current, that's the amount of electrical charge. The bigger the load, the higher the current. Next we have the resistance. Every material has a resistance to electricity. The higher the resistance, the less the current flows. Next we have the conductors. They're substances such as metals, either copper, aluminium, that have little resistance to electricity and allow it to flow. And finally, insulators. These are things such as wood, rubber or glass that have a high resistance to electricity and stop it flowing. Firstly, let's look at the current. There are two main types of current. The first is direct current or DC. The main source of DC power we'll consider on this course is from batteries. Here's the symbol that we'll use. Simply two parallel lines the long line is the positive terminal, and the short line is the negative terminal. Here's the battery that we all know well. Again, it has a positive and a negative terminal. Power flows from the positive terminal, through the load and back into the negative terminal. In a direct current or DC electrical system, the current always flows in the same direction. If we plan out the graph, it'll just be a horizontal line over time. DC is used in cars and inside most electronic devices, i.e. your television or phone. The main advantage of DC electricity is that its energy can be stored in chemical form, i.e. batteries. The main disadvantage of DC electricity is that changing the voltages and currents is difficult when we are dealing with large amounts of energy. This is the main reason we do not use DC for most electrical supply networks around the world. The other type of current we see is alternating current or AC. The main source of AC power we'll be using in this course will either be from the electrical network or an electrical generator. Here is the general AC symbol that we will use. Basically a circle with a sine wave inside and a live and neutral terminals. AC power flows from the live terminal, through the load and back into the neutral terminal. Please notice the different terminology to the DC system. Instead of positive it's live, instead of negative it's now neutral. In an alternate current or AC electrical system, the voltage and current waveforms alternate from positive to negative. What we normally see in an alternating current system is a sine wave. And as we said, it goes from positive to negative over a full cycle over time. The main disadvantage of AC electricity is that we cannot store it in the same way that we can with DC electricity. Once it's made, it has to be used straight away. The main benefit of AC systems is that we can change the magnitude of the voltage and currents fairly easily. This is why we see AC in most electrical networks around the world, including the system in your home. Let's now look at a voltage source we're all familiar with. The first thing to remember is the ground normally has zero volts. Let's look at some clouds in the sky. When the conditions are right, the water droplets in the cloud rub together creating static electricity and the cloud voltage potential increases. The 
This creates a potential voltage difference between the ground voltage, which is zero, and the cloud. But the potential difference is high enough to break down the air in between, a lightning strike will occur. As the cloud is the source of the electricity, we class it as the live element. The air is the conductor that the electricity passes through. Electricity is a form of energy that occurs due to the existence of charged particles, either electrons or protons. Let's look at a conductor. Inside the conductor we have lots of atoms, either copper or aluminium atom. If we now apply voltage across the conductor, the electrons will flow from one atom to the next. This flow is called current. The flow will continue as long as the voltage potential difference is there. To use electricity, we need these basic elements. A voltage source, either AC or DC. A live or positive conductor to take the electricity to its destination. This could be made of copper or aluminium. A load to use the energy of the electricity. This could be a washing machine or a hairdryer. A neutral or negative conductor to take the electricity back to its source. When a full circuit is created, current flows. We can also think of the electricity as flowing water. It's a good analogy. Next we have the water pump, i.e. the voltage source. This pumps the water around the system. Next we have the live or positive pipe to take the water from the source to the load. Then we have the load. In this case it's a water wheel. But in real life, in an electrical system, it might be a heater or a light bulb. Then we have the neutral or negative pipe to take the water from the load back to the source. Let's now start the water pump. The water will flow from the source, through the live, through the load and back through the neutral. When the water arrives at the load, the water wheel will start turning. When a full circuit is created, water or current will flow. And as we said, it goes through the live, through the load and back through the neutral. The load absorbs the energy of the water. Therefore, in the live or positive side, the water is quite fast and there's a high voltage. On the neutral side, the water is running slower, therefore we have a low voltage. Let's now summarise what we've learned today. The two main types of electricity we use are alternating current or AC, and direct current or DC. For electricity to flow we need an electrical source, a voltage, a circuit and a load. When we have these a current will flow. DC is used in batteries and for powering electronic equipment. AC is used for the main electrical networks in our home and community.